welcome back to the Butte Town Buzz. I'm Hilda Dabachi. Our broadcast today is jam-packed with stories. We'll lead off with reporter Noah Neal. Noah is clearly unhappy about the Butte Town Buzz microphones, and we'll find out why. We'll take you to an area of Cardiff where the past is about to meet the present, and we'd like you to meet a 16-year-old girl who holds down a part-time job while attending college, and she has a special reason for doing it. Welcome back. As we mentioned a moment ago, Noel Neal is on a mission to find a solution to a little issue he has with the Butte Town Buzz microphones. Hello, I'm Noel Neal, and here at the Butte Town Buzz, we strive to produce a professional broadcast. And to do that, we often have to get creative. Here's an example. This plastic microphone holder. The holder alone costs 50 quid on Amazon. But then, we had an amazing idea. Thanks to a generous grant from Sky, the Cardiff Youth Service have just opened the first digital hub in Wales. And included with that grant was the funding to purchase a brilliant 3D printer. We challenged Guy Evans, a digital youth worker, to create a 3D printed microphone holder. And we hoped it cost way less than 50 quid. Well, this is about 30 grams in weight. And if you think like a, a kilogram of filament is probably like about 13, 14 pounds. We're talking like in cost less than a pound, really. 3D printing is an amazing technology. Right in front of our eyes, the printer began to produce exactly what we were looking for. We did lots of measurements um, of the original microphone, finding a model that we kind of uh, edited and changed. And then we were able to kind of print that. We were amazed, but there's just one problem. The microphone holder is quite red. It looks like a toy. Not very professional. The problem was easily solved with a little bit of black spray paint. And the 3D printed microphone holders work just as well as the 50 pound one. I love 3D printing. I find it so phenomenal that you can kind of create a design and it's in your imagination and then you can actually hold it. I find that really fascinating, you know? It's like, yeah, I'll never ever get bored of 3D printing. And here it is. A 3D printed homemade microphone. We'd like to thank Guy and also thank Sky for their support of all the young people who will enjoy these amazing facilities. I'm Lone Neil for the Butte Town Buzz. If you have an interest in making films or want to up your game with your own social media videos, check out this story by Daniel O'Connor. A little later on in our show, our weather segment with Callers will feature a technology that we have been using for about a year. It's called virtual production. Virtual production is amazing technology that uses green screen. But there is one important difference. With virtual production, you can move the camera around, and when you do that, the virtual background moves just like you're really there. Hi there. Thanks for coming on this tour. So, I can be in this beautiful flat or this grungy prison. I can try to sell you a vintage automobile, and I can even show you around this beautiful hotel. We designed the 360 degree sets ourselves using AI technology that creates environment based on the way we describe them. Whether it's an old prison cell or a grungy abandoned cavern, maybe it's a cottage in the Brecon Beacons. If we can imagine it, we can create it. We filmed the Butte Town Buzz on a youth centre here in Cardiff. But with a piece of green screen and an iPhone, we can basically film our show anywhere. Before shooting our weather segment, the staff will set up the green screen and using AI technology like Mid Journey and Blockade Lab, we can design our own sets. Watch out Hollywood, a technology that used to cost hundreds of thousands of pounds, even millions, can now be produced with a mobile phone you may have in your pocket. I'm Daniel O'Connor with the Butte Town Buzz. Cardiff is a great city for riding bicycles, and most of the bike riders in Wales are younger. We recently visited a bike safety event in Ely. Jonas Revely is the reporter. It's estimated about 10% of the Welsh population own and ride bicycles, and the majority of those bikers are under the age of 17. Ely Youth Centre have been running a project and they've organised an event today for young people around bikes and bike safety. Today's event took place at Cardiff West Community High School and it brought together parents, children, Cardiff Youth Service and other organisations involved in bike safety. 
So we organised this event because there were some issues in the community with bike safety and there were some issues um, where young people sadly have lost their lives in like road traffic accidents. So we wanted to put something on with the community. We just thought we'd come over there and have a little bit of fun. What's the biggest lift of that you've seen on a person, young person's well, bike? Probably bold tyres, but also I suppose having no brakes which can be very dangerous. Obviously, I need bike safety because I have no idea. <laughs> it's great to see so many young people taking bike safety seriously. I'm Jonas Weverly reporting for Butte Town Buzz. Staying with the bicycling theme, let's head out to the city centre for our Vox Pop segment, where our topic is walking and bicycling. Getting out, walking, having fresh air, and just breathing in and meeting other people. I'll really be grateful for cycling paths because I keep having to stop for people when I'm walking on the sidewalk. So there's lots of benefits, I believe, to walking and cycling. The main one would be, obviously, uh, good physical activity, um, good for your mental health, um, obviously your physical well-being. It's one of the best things you can do, not sat in the house, playing on your phone and on your computers. When I walk like the three and a half miles to work, I definitely feel more awake, more alert, like I've almost got a workout in already. Smoothing the fresh air, um, yeah, taking your mind off things and yeah, getting some exercise. More families ought to go more cycling together and then they can teach their children. Cardiff used to be lined with canals for transporting coal, but those canals were covered up decades ago. All of that is about to change and some people have mixed feelings about those changes. Paolo Bini reports. As we look down our city, it's hard to believe it was once covered in canals. After being hidden for over 70 years, the canal quarter has been given a new chance of life and will be home to brand new businesses which will expand our city. Canals in, in, in the past were used to transport coal from the, the valleys areas of Cardiff um, back to, to the seaport um, where it was transported all the way around the world and also Britain itself. When the canal opens up, the plan is that this will be an open place to celebrate the history of Cardiff. But there are some concerns too. It'll add some green spaces to the city, which Cardiff desperately needs. But I am worried about how it will affect the businesses on the street, because there are some businesses that I love. For a moment, it's not good for us with all this going on, but in the long run, it's going to be brilliant. I believe that when they're done, it will look very beautiful. I think it's a good idea in, in, in part sense, but they seem to be opening it up to just to make it pretty for, for people to sit around and drink and have parties in a sense. I, I personally believe they shouldn't have buried them all and covered all the canals in, in the 50s and 40s when they did it. With the canal, the past meets the present and the city hopes for a win-win for everyone. For Pete Tambers, I'm Paolo Bini. Special thanks to everyone who took the time to talk to us while filming that story. Earlier in the show, you heard about our special virtual weather set. Let's head over there now for the forecast. Hi, I'm Khalid Dessin and welcome to our 360 degree virtual production weather studio. As we head into the weekend, let's take a look at the three day forecast. We'll see some sunshine tomorrow with a temperature range of 11 degrees midday and a low of 7 degrees Celsius tomorrow night. It'll be slightly warmer on Sunday with some light rain and a moderate breeze. On Monday the sun returns and the breeze will hang around. Those light breezes are a welcome change from the severe winds we had last week, causing massive flight delays across the UK. That's a three-day forecast. Overall, we have a decent weekend ahead. Thanks, Khaled. We'd like to introduce you to a young person who has been in the news recently for her volunteering work in Cardiff. Her name is Chloe. She's a true inspiration. Fionn Oakley is the reporter. It's a Monday night in Cardiff and 16-year-old Chloe Louise is just starting her night shift at Costa. Like many teens here, Chloe is not a stranger to a hard day's work. My job is a barista in Costa Coffee. Um, obviously it consists of like serving the customers, Aww. smiling them as soon as they come through the door and greeting them, making their coffee to like top faction. The money she earns at Costa is more than just about buying new clothes. Personally I come from a background where my parents don't earn that much money so I think it's just nice to know that I have my own financial means so my parents can have more income for themselves. As Chloe appreciates the extra spending money, she has a different perspective about the benefits of working. It builds you, like it makes you a new character, but then you also learn a lot of new skills that can like develop you onto the next stage of your life. Chloe carries a full schedule at school and doesn't sugarcoat its challenges. It is hard. <laughs> it is a task because you're in that like you're in that age where so much is going on. But like 
it's just something you have to do, but it's nice because you learn a sense of management. You learn how to manage your time. You learn what's more important. Like you focus on the more important things. It's clear that Chloe shines in everything she does. For the Butte Town Buzz, I'm Fiona and Chloe. Thank you, Fiona and Chloe. Let's head out to Cardiff Castle for a few shout outs to the Cardiff Youth Service for everything they do. Hi, I'm Oscar Smith and um, I'm from the Amram Youth Club. We're coming here with the Youth Club today to go ice skating. Daniel and I've come here with the Young Creators. Really cold, but I'm excited. Gonna go around and do some stuff outside the ice rink, it's gonna be great. After I do ice skating, I'm probably going to get some food because I'm getting quite hungry. The Cardiff Youth Service is a great experience and I really think more G people should be experienced in it. It's just unbelievably fun and interesting. Thanks so much for watching this edition of the Butte Town Buzz. We are already working on stories for our next broadcast, including a segment where we meet some of the young people who attend an LGBTQ plus youth group and find out why the game Dungeons and Dragons has become an important part of their time together. And we'll tell you why. Have a great half-term break. See you in a few weeks. Bye.